you don't need a data scientist in your team to start using AI in finance. I've taught more than hundreds of finance teams how to leverage AI to automate manual tasks, to clean data, and even get insights in seconds. So today, I'll go through six strategies I have used personally with AI and how you can implement them into your work today. I will show you how to run a court analysis in seconds instead of hours, how to clean your data automatically automatically with AI and even I will share with you my favorite tools to use data with AI. Let's dive in. Number one, how to use generative AI to identify your most valuable KPIs. A prompt that I like to use is this one. What are the five traditional KPIs and five innovative KPIs to track my performance based on this data? Tell me why and how to calculate this in Excel and which graph could help me. So if I use this prompt into ChatGPT and imagine I use this on this table, which represent the different product for this supermarket, how much we sold, how much they sold last year, the margin, etc, etc. So two techniques for this. What you can do, I like to do this, is just copy the first five lines. So copy, and then we'll go back to ChatGPT, and you can just paste the lines and remove the file here. So now we have an example of the data inside ChatGPT. If you have a ChatGPT Teams or a ChatGPT Enterprise, or if you are using a professional license of Copilot, you should be able to upload your confidential data from your company. You need to check that, of course, but let's use this technique and let's see what ChatGPT will do for me. And I will also change the model to go with O3 because O3 resonates better. And this is a problem where I want here a better time for the model to think about and to analyze and to help me and to structure the answer in a better way. So let's see the response. So we can see that the model is thinking and now it starts by first identifying KPIs, also the calculations and the graphs. You can see that if I click on expand, I see the different steps of the thinking process, including as well some code that ChatGPT will do. And now it's thinking about some innovative KPIs and some graphs. So you can see how long we took already to process all of this information and to let the model think about it. So now here we have the result with the five traditional KPIs. So of course, total revenue and revenue growth and makes sense unit sold and volume average unit price and gross margin and revenue per square foot you even have here the excel formula you should use and the recommended graph what i really like is the next part the innovative kpis for example profit per square foot or promotion roi price elasticity indicator you can see how complicated is the formula that's why ChatGPT here is really helpful we have also category contribution index it helps understand which category is over or underperforming compared to the total business and then here it tells us how we can do that in excel which functions we can use and this is only the first answer so now i already got 10 great kpis and i could continue and go on and here you could see how long this model took to think about it one minute and 18 seconds that's really long which is good because it means we got a good output and we got a lot of help tell me in the comment what you think about this kpis and this technique that's one of my favorite way to get something super concrete straight away. Before I continue, I just wanted to say that if you are looking to master AI as a finance pro and as fast as possible, you can click in the first link in the description and get my free AI for finance course, which is exactly for that. Now back to the video. The second part now is about cohort analysis. Imagine here this cohort analysis. If you don't know what is a cohort analysis, this is an example here. Imagine you are working for Netflix. What you want to do is to keep as long as possible your subscribers here with this table you are actually going to see which subscriber are staying the longest and we are ranging the subscriber by their month of subscription here you see in the first month in january 2022 that the first four months everybody stayed slowly people started leaving so six percent left after five months but then after 23 months only 42 percent remain so that helps you see if you are improving or or degrading your retention. And you can see that we have a big outlier here with the month of August in 2022. How long do you think this will take you to do? I've talked with a lot of people doing this type of analysis in Excel, and most of the time they tell me that to build this the first time, it takes them at least four hours. Imagine four hours to build this. Why? Because behind you have a lot of calculations. After you need to put all of this into a specific format, on top you need to create the conditional formatting. 
routing. Really tough, really complicated, even for Excel gurus. But let's see if AI can do that faster. So now this is the file that I have. And you can see the file is not really complicated. This date, customer ID, product, invoice. With this file, what I will do is I will go into ChatGPT. I will upload the file and I will ask ChatGPT to help me build this cohort analysis. So I type, can you do a cohort analysis? And really important, visually. And I will say that it's by months and on the retention rate. That's the KPI I want to calculate. So now ChatGPT is reading the file with Python. And then ChatGPT is creating this analysis with Python. And the fact that ChatGPT is using Python, it helps you audit the work. Because you know the input and then you see the formula, which is the Python code. And if you have your input plus your formula, you get here your output, the cohort analysis, monthly retention rate. So how long did we take now? Like 30 seconds, one minute? Crazy, right? And a lot of people that are already doing that uh, in Excel and took four hours, when I show that to them, they just get crazy and they are super excited. So that's one technique if you can upload your data, but you can also take this code and run it on your own desktop or on your own tools inside your own environment if you don't want to upload any data into AI. Third tip for you, how to automate the data cleaning using AI. Well, here, my tip is actually to use script. But the problem is writing script is super hard. You need to learn how to code. Well, that was before AI. Now, let me show you how you can use AI to do the script for you. Here I am in Google Drive and I have my file, which is the summary of all of the credit card statement of my company for this month. The thing is, we have a lot of tabs. We also have a really messy data with some headers we don't need, with some lines we don't need, with some columns we don't need. I know most probably there will be somebody in my company who is trying to consolidate that manually by doing copy and paste. So what I will do is I will copy here the first lines and then I will paste that into ChatGPT to explain how my data looks like. And then that's where the magic happens. I'm going to explain to ChatGPT what I want to do with this file. The first, I want to consolidate all of the tabs in one. Second, I want to keep only the columns C, D, E. You saw the lines there that are a bit messy where we are going to delete those lines because they are useless and I don't want them. So I don't want the first lines. Then what I want is when we repeat the data, I want still to know from which column cardholder name it comes from and from which company. So I'm explaining ChatGPT what I want. So keeping the cardholder name and the company name, which is in B2. Then I ask, write the Google script for me for this data cleaning. And look what I get. I get the code. So I don't need to know how to code. And that's really the magic here. And I have to admit, like, I never learned how to code and I'm using that every day. And of course, you have to audit. You have to understand what is happening. But you can use AI to explain you this code. I can tell you, like, once you verify that it works, you are going to use this technique all the time. So now that you get the code, really important is to ask where to put this code. So for this, I'm going to ask ChatGPT again, where should I put this data? And this is where ChatGPT explains me exactly what to do. For all of you who don't know how to use and where to find the Google app script, well, it's here. You just go to extensions and you click app scripts. And then here you have the app script view where you can enter your code. So now that I'm inside, I can copy my code. I can have here a new script that I will name, so data cleaning. And once I've named it, I can just run it. And when I run it, it will ask me first if I am allowed to run it on the spreadsheet. So I will say yes. Once I've done that, I continue. And look what is happening. Here it is. Our automation is working. We just started a few minutes ago and we already have an automation which is replicating a manual work which will have cost me hours of work. Amazing. So now you have your automation and you can do much more. I had recently one of my AI Finance Club member explaining to me that they have used Google Script to find a PDF in Google Drive, to extract the PDF information, to place it in Google Sheet, and then do analysis based on that. Imagine how much you can do with this. Tip number four, ask AI what you don't know that you don't know. <laughs> this is a tip that you can use either for your work, but also for personal purpose. Let me show you how I use it for my business. I am in ChatGPT and I am in a customized GPT. So in this customized GPT, I can show you what I have. Let's go inside the GPT. And you can see that this is my assistant knowing about me with my bio, knowing my SNOP, my LinkedIn profile, my email templates, and also SNOP, and some admin, admin details about me. So it knows a lot about my business and about me. And I'm just asking, what are 100 things I should know? Which 
which I might not know. And look at everything is coming, asking me your exact total number of unique customers. Which product has the highest lifetime customer value? And if you continue, look at other things like average time from someone following you to making their first purchase. This is just amazing things you discover that, yeah, like maybe I need to think about that, but this is reminding me that I'm not seeing that. It's in my blind spot. Tools that I should use, like, or how I should use my tools. Like how many hours are spent monthly on tasks that can be automated with Zapier? Education and training. Like, do I have like a clear roadmap between beginner, intermediate, and advanced? Well, actually in the AI Finance Club, we have it. Yeah, could we? E could each course have a 30 second teaser video edit? That's amazing. Like, this blows my mind every day that I use uh, ChatGPT like this. And you could use that for your work. Let me show you how we did it for somebody which is part of the AI Finance Club. We went and used this because this person was joining a new company. So this AI Finance Club member was going to join a new company. And I just say, what are the 100 things that I should know, but I don't know? This is about a company who is running parks, like entertainment parks. And so this is kind of a specific business. But look at what is telling me. For example, know the cost per guest per attraction. Or imagine like different regions, different pricing psychology. Board guests spend more on snacks. Didn't know that. Ride downtime, lost revenue. Guest dwell time, revenue level. Yes. Park upgrades, effort long-term ROI. You have things like cultural seasonality that you need to pay attention and that you might not know. That's also interesting. Local park general managers may prioritize volume over profit based on their different goals. This is like a good reminder of how to use that if you start a new job or even if you want to challenge yourself. Another tip, if you are a small or medium-sized company, you can use AI native tools like Puzzle or Concourse. Puzzle, for example, is really good at automating your accounting processes because it connects to subledger like Stripe, Gusto, Mercury, Bill, and this connection to subledger go into your general ledger without any manual process. And because of this, Puzzle is able to use this data plus AI to create your accounting and then to even create dashboards for you where you have your main KPIs calculated. So the close is super fast thanks to that. And also for you as a company, it's super fast to process these accounting and closing processes, but it's only if you have already this really common subledger. So this is why it's more for startups that are using Stripe, that are using Gusto, that are using Mercury. But if you are a traditional company, you can also look at something like Concourse. Imagine if you have your accounting in QuickBooks Online. Well, you can connect QuickBooks Online with Concourse and Concourse will will use this data to create your monthly reporting, analyzing the actuals against last month, like you are seeing right now on the video. What is good as well is that you can change yourself the text and also create new graph or change the way the report looks like and everything is generated by AI and is under your control. And at the date of doing this video, I'm not affiliated with Puzzle or Concourse. I've just talked with the founders and I thought, well, they are doing a good product. So I want to talk about them because because I really like what they are building. I think the fact that they are AI native is a really good aspect of their company because they don't have a lot of history behind them that prevent them to move fast. So because they are AI native, they are going to be able to move fast to take all of the new innovation and also grow their functionalities more rapidly than traditional solutions. Last tip for this video is something not a lot of people know, but now with AI who can code for you, this tip is actually to use API to pull your data from your accounting system or to other types of tools like Salesforce or HubSpot and use this data and analyze this data. But the problem is that until now you needed to know how to code for this, but not anymore. Look at how you can get exactly the code that you need to pull, for example, your data from QuickBooks in just a few seconds. So here in my prompt, I'm explaining my context. So I am an accountant. My problem, I want to automate the construction of my management reports and I give more more context about which tool I am using. And also the problem is that it takes me a lot of manual work doing it in Excel. So I ask the question, how can I automate it? But most importantly, I don't ask for one solution. I ask first to show me the different solutions and the pros and cons. So let's see the answer using either, you can use the reasoning model, but you can also use ChatGPT 4.0. For this, that should be enough. So you can see it's also searching the web. So now it starts to find the different solutions. 
solutions. And after 55 seconds, I have the different solutions here. So we have the first one, which is stay inside QuickBooks. The second one is an add-on reporting. Then we can use Excel with add-ins. We can use Microsoft Power Query and Power BI Connector. We can use a no-code workflow platforms like Zapier, Make, or Power Automate. Or you can write custom scripts via QuickBooks API. So here you have also some help to help you choose it. And then the next step is basically to choose one of the options and dig deeper in one of them to ask ChatGPT how to do it. So typically here, we were talking about the API. I will ask how to do the number six. Show me all the steps to do number six. Remember that I don't know how to code. So be super detailed. So now the model starts thinking about it. It's searching also the documentation of QuickBooks on APIs. So after one minute and three seconds, here is how to perform the operations. So first, what we need. Here are all of the items we need. Then after what we need to do, so create the QuickBooks app, then prepare a project folder. So it explains to us everything what is to do. Really like at the end, if you only do this for the first time, the code is only this one, create the reporting script. It's just this code that you need and with this code you can get the profit and loss from quickbooks automatically and without having to go back into quickbooks anymore so this is here really the charm of api is that just with this code that you put in python then you will get the data and on top after you can do more work because the data are already in python so these are the six ways you can start implementing ai into your workflows but this was just the surface so if you are serious about mastering AI as a finance professional and get help from me, then click the first link in the description and you will get my free AI finance course, which will help you use all of these frameworks and even more to finally use AI the right way for finance. So click in the first link and I will see you in the next video.